$21.99 after rebate. Or this sectional sofa set is now below $9.99.99. Only at Brands March USA. Trust meteorologist Mikkel Hannah Harding for your first alert. Live from Augusta, you're watching News 12, live at 5. A wet day across the river region for us, and a first alert in effect for us as well as we toss things over to first alert chief meteorologist Riley Hill. Riley, how long before this rain leaves us today? Well, it looks like the rain uh, is going to continue this evening. It will come to an end most likely by midnight. The concern tonight is going to be some pretty strong wind gusts, so we actually are underneath a wind advisory through 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Gusting winds around 40, 45 miles an hour will be possible as the main cold front of this system does push through later tonight, so expecting wind to really are picking up later this evening and continue into early Tuesday. That combination of some pretty strong wind gusts could lead to some downed trees just with very saturated soils, and we are still continuing a flash flood watch until midnight tonight. Here's the wind advisory, so highlighting this brown color, pretty much every county in the CS already except our southern counties, but you're still expecting some pretty breezy conditions. Currently speaking, there's not much wind out there at the moment. It's a little bit gusty in a few spots, maybe up to 20 miles an hour in Swainsboro, uh, and, uh, in Sandersville, but the wind will start to really pick up as the front gets closer this evening into tonight. Starting to see those gusting winds around 30, 35 miles an hour, maybe getting close to 40 in spots, so definitely some intense wind at times tonight, and just make sure you are staying safe on the roadways. Give those high-profile vehicles uh, plenty of extra room. Here's a look at our rain totals over the last 24 hours, over 3 inches in Washington County, close to 3 inches there in Jenkins County, and we do have a couple of flood warnings to mention briefly to you. Uh, Stevens Creek near Modoc, that is going to uh, start to reach flood stage later tonight. Uh, so a heads up there if you do live on Stevens Creek. Much more on this forecast in just a bit. Let's get a quick update on your first alert traffic. And now, first alert traffic. Here's a look at our building just outside, and we are looking at Riverwatch and I-20 and just some great conditions. Not seeing necessarily a ton of rain at the moment outside of our building, but uh, we are noticing that traffic is moving okay. So a heads up, just some slick spots on the roadways. That rain is going to be found across the region later this evening and tonight. And remember, once the wind picks up, just give those high-profile vehicles plenty of room. Much more on the rest of the week's forecast for you in just about 10 minutes. Thanks, Riley. You can stay up to date on any weather alerts now and in the future with the First Alert Weather App. Just scan the flow code there on your screen. It'll take you to the First Alert Weather app. And the severe weather Riley just talked about did impact Augusta. The two state can be prone to flooding when we do get a lot of that rain. So we made sure to check out a few areas for you guys. Craig Allison is live from Berkman's Road in Richmond County. Craig, what have you seen today around Augusta? Well, fortunately for the time being, it's actually stopped raining on us right now, but that's just the case for right now. But with the added rain, the usual floods pop-up spots are happening in Harrisburg and those curbsides in downtown Augusta. But with these rapids moving from Rays Creek into Berkman's Road, even just a little bit of rain is a struggle for neighbors nearby. Now, there has been improvement with Areas such as Reynolds Streets nearby the Freedom Bridge doing a lot better than our last series storm in mid-January. But some neighborhoods, like on Kemp Drive, are seeing the water come up so high into their yards, even the sewer covers have water flowing up out from them. I caught up with Ruthie Foss today, who we talked to two years ago when she first moved here, and says the flooding issues have been consistent. Um, it, the creek comes up, you know, in the blink of an eye, and it's like a river back there. I did see a man one time from the city checking the drains out here, but, I mean, they're still in the same condition. And all new on News 12 at 6 o'clock, we'll continue to keep you updated on if any of this weather is affecting Augusta or anywhere nearby. Good to see that rain slow down for us. We'll check back with you, with you later in the afternoon. Thanks, Craig. An exit on I-20 in Atlanta was closed for hours after a martyr bus caught on fire as it returned to a parking garage this morning. Emergency crews responded to reports for a fire near the area at around 2.20 in the morning in DeKalb County. Now, investigators say it appears to have happened from a tire blowout. There were no passengers on board, and the driver was not injured. Well, Nikki Haley has been making the rounds. She had... 
More than 160 electric school buses will soon be on the roads in South Carolina. The buses are coming from nearly $66 million the federal government is sending the state for greener versions of this vital transportation. Mary Green has the details tonight from Orangeburg, which just received some of those buses. School leaders say this is about having clean, healthy buses for South Carolina's children to ride on every day. This is just an additional um, step to ensuring that that complete educational experience, that the ride to and from school is just as memorable, just as exciting, and just as comfortable and clean as it is when they get inside of our buildings. The first students in the Orangeburg County School District got to ride on one of the new buses Monday alongside Congressman Jim Clyburn and Environmental Protection Agency Administrator Michael Regan who are in town to celebrate the investment. Orangeburg is one of 16 districts around the state slated to receive some of the 168 new buses coming to South Carolina. The EPA says five billion dollars total will be sent throughout the country for electric buses with about 60 percent of that money still to be allocated so far south carolina's allotment is third highest among all states in part Clyburn says because of a concerted effort to focus federal dollars in counties where a large portion of the population has lived in poverty for decades and so what the minister regan is trying to do is to make sure that we address needs just not to just get money out of the door. Here in Orangeburg County, for example, nearly 80% of students take a bus to and from school every day. The district says its school buses travel about 1.3 million miles annually. Reporting in Orangeburg, I'm Mary Green. The vast majority of the nearly $66 million paying for these buses in South Carolina comes from the bipartisan infrastructure law President Biden signed in 2021. A hairstylist turned an Atlanta beauty shop into a black history museum. We look at how he did it and what's in there coming up next. Riley. We've seen a lot of rain today and continuing rain this evening and then getting pretty windy into tonight. Take a look at that first alert forecast just after the break. Call Ken. commitment to you is the power of five meteorologists all the tools the latest technology and the first team of five meteorologists news 12's first alert weather on your side water in your welcome back as we take a live look outside i-20 in grovetown here riley just a gloomy afternoon for us when can we start to see things clear up well, by tomorrow, well, we're bringing back sunshine and temperatures not necessarily going to cool down uh, significantly behind this system tonight. So by tomorrow, it will be very nice for us. But this evening into tonight, we're still going to keep the chance for rain. And it's going to start getting pretty windy once this main system does start to get a little bit closer towards us. Temperatures have actually reached their minimum right now. Temperatures currently in the upper 50s. We started off the day in the low 60s. So we've actually seen temperatures go down most of our afternoon. But here's a look at our radar network to where right now we're kind of in a lull here in Augusta, so not really seeing too much rain here around the metro, but just all that rain from earlier now pushing east of the CS rate. There's new showers starting to blossom though in our western county, so that is going to continue building towards Augusta as we head later into this evening. The main cold front is still in uh, Alabama, so this still has a good ways to travel before that main front does reach us, which is timed out to happen most likely between 9 p.m. and midnight tonight, and that's when our winds are really going to start ramping up across the area. So since we're ahead of this front, we're going to keep the opportunity for rain this evening up until around 9, 10 p.m. I would imagine once we get closer to 10, 11 o'clock later tonight, that's when the wind's really starting to pick up across the air. We could see those gusts maybe close to 40 miles an hour at times. Not expecting that rain to really last into the overnight, so clearing skies as we get towards early tomorrow morning. Just going to stay pretty breezy out there the first part of the day on Tuesday. 
Here's a look at our projected wind gusts pushing forward this evening and to tonight. So currently speaking, not necessarily overly windy, but once we get into later this evening, the wind will start to get a little bit higher out there. So that's why we have issued a first alert. Wind advisory is still in effect until 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Winds gusting to around 40, 45 miles per hour. And just that combination of saturated soils from all the rain we've seen today could lead to a few power outages across the area. So make sure you are keeping that cell phone charged up and avoid any flooded roadways you may encounter. We've had seen a ton of rain across the area today, so still a flood watch in effect until midnight tonight. Here's our day planner tomorrow. So once again, clear skies for Tuesday, waking up with temps in the 40s. Still a little bit breezy out there throughout most of our Tuesday morning. Sustained near 15, maybe gusting close to 20, 25 miles an hour. And then into the afternoon, the, will, uh, the wind will start to taper off a little bit. Pretty comfortable out there. Sunshine, highs near 60 degrees, so not a bad end. Wednesday is Valentine's Day, so a heads up, don't forget about it. Wednesday during the day, we're going to see nice conditions, waking up in the 30s, afternoon highs in the 60s. If you're heading out for your Wednesday evening, looks to stay cool out there and nice and dry as well. So here's the rain that continues this evening and to tonight, and just some hit or miss showers out there the next several hours. Once we start to see those clear skies, that's when the wind really starts to increase across the area, and that will help drop our temperatures into the 40s by daybreak tomorrow. Sunshine can continues Tuesday. Most of our Wednesday wind direction generally out of the northwest the next couple of days, and that is going to bring us some colder mornings, most likely down into the 30s. Gradually warming up those afternoons, though, as we get later into the week, so mid-60s by Wednesday, and then by Thursday should be into the upper 60s. Not much rain in our forecast for the rest of the work week. Once we get done with what's in store tonight, it's going to be, unfortunately, Saturday. We do bring in that next chance for rain, but it doesn't necessarily look like a significant amount out there. Quick look at that seven day forecast. Once again, Valentine's Day, Wednesday it looks to stay sunny, seasonal then. And as we get closer to the weekend, brief warm up before some rain Saturday. All right, thanks, Riley. At least one person died and another five were injured after a small plane. Amazon stock worth billions has been sold by Jeff Bezos. The Amazon executive chairman filed a statement last week to indicate the sale of nearly 12 million shares of common stock. The listing price of the shares was more than $2 billion. Bezos stepped down from being Amazon CEO in 2021. An Atlanta hairstylist turned a beauty shop into a museum filled with black history. Jasmina Alston gives us a look at what came about that and what's inside. Greetings, my name is Arifi. I'm the curator and artistic director of the space. You are inside an original Madam C.J. Walker beauty shop from the 1940s. It was an accident when hairstylist Reese DeForest stumbled upon this beauty shop 30 years ago. Turning off of historic Auburn Avenue, he saw the words on the front glass, Madam C.J. Walker Beauty Shop. 11 years later, he got it and everything inside. Crimping irons from back in the day to create waves. Madam C.J. Walker sold beauty products and became one of the wealthiest black women of her time. She was worth up to a million dollars when she died over a hundred years ago. DeForest once met the shop's last living stylist or agent as they were called back then. When she started doing hair here in the 1940s with these tools, that a shampoo and press was 25 cents for a Negro woman. DeForest discovered more civil rights history hidden upstairs, the first black-owned radio station, WERD. 1949 to 1968. It's the station Dr. Martin Luther King used. No white station would let a Negro come on and say we're to boycott or coordinate logistics for the civil rights movement. So WERD is crucial to the civil rights movement. DeForest decided to incorporate the music into the space with a donated collection of nearly 15,000 records. To the blues, to jazz, to R&B, to rock and roll. Photos of prominent black artists line the walls and hang from the ceiling. These are some of the individuals that would have gone to WERD back in the day. Each representing puzzle pieces that DeForest put together in his own artistic way to show the history. In the historic Sweet Auburn District, Yasmina Alston, Atlanta News First. Well, parents with babies are not required to have a car seat on board planes, despite the possible risk of turbulence or accidents. We'll look at the dilemma facing parents coming up next. First Alert Radar, powered by Jim Hudson Automotive Group. A serious accident creates a lot of right now problems. You're worried about your injuries, the medical bills, and whether you'll get stuck paying for it all. You shouldn't have to chase after a lawyer to get the help you need. With me, you won't have to. I'm Austin Jackson, your guy in Augusta. If you've been injured, my team will get to work right away. 
and you don't have to pay us anything unless we get money for you. Enter, call Austin Jackson, the Augusta guy, 706-724-7224. Is your child safe sitting on your lap at 35,000 feet? The FAA is still not requiring child safety seats or even seat belts for kids under two after a door plug was sucked out of an Alaskan Airlines jet. There were babies in their parents' laps at the time. National investigative reporter Brendan Keith explains the surprising reason behind the policy. Sarah and Sky Carter always buckle up their son for a trip at 50 miles per hour. Folks, good morning to you. Welcome to work from the flight deck. But they never buckle Kylo at 500 miles per hour. Sky's breastfeeding, um, so it makes it very convenient to be able to hold him. There were three lap babies on board Alaska Airlines Flight 1282 when a door plug blew out at 16,000 feet. By chance, the unrestrained children were nowhere near the gaping hole in the side of the plane put their children under two in their own seat uh, in a FAA approved car seat so that they are secure and that they are safe. That's the government's recommendation, but not the rule. Families still bring car seats to the airport, but many check them as luggage because kids under two travel for free when on a parent's lap. Studies show requiring parents to buy a full price seat for their babies would not only cost more money, statistically, it could also cost more lives. If just one family out of five chose to drive to grandma's house instead of fly, 10 times more children would be killed. How is that even possible? Because runway 25 is a lot safer than Highway 85. In the United States, there's one passenger car death for every 200 million miles driven. But for air travel, there's one fatality for every 10 billion miles flown. Billion with a B. The FAA has determined that requiring child safety restraints on aircraft would actually kill more children in car crashes every year than it could possibly save from plane crashes. Would it change your decision on shorter trips? Would you drive instead of fly? Yes, on shorter trips, yes. During our interview, there was a car crash just outside the Atlanta terminal. In fact, ambulances at the busiest airport in the world respond to far more car crashes than plane crashes. Canada's Aviation Authority made a similar calculation as the FAA after a lap baby was killed there in a plane crash in 2012. Transport Canada determined a safety restraint requirement would kill 10 more babies on Canada's highways over the same decade that would save just one from a plane crash. Well, it's kind of apples and oranges talking about proportion, but it feels like they flip-flop that as a reason to justify not pursuing safety. Megan Gibson is a child passenger safety specialist with Children's Hospital of Atlanta. Turbulence is a really big issue, so that is where we're seeing a lot of these injuries come from. If there's turbulence, is that something you're concerned about? No, because we wear our seatbelts and he's never not held. But a requirement would actually force parents to pay for two seats for their baby, the plane seat and another car seat if theirs is not not approved by the FAA. At the same time the government is saying you can't just bring any car seat on an airplane, it's also saying you don't have to bring one at all. It is very frustrating. When you work in injury prevention, it's always point counterpoint for many things. When the risk is low and the cost is high, many parents are choosing to hold their children's lives in their hands. Now, if forced to buy a ticket for their baby or toddler, some people may choose not to travel at all, so the FAA's numbers may be flawed. Tonight, people in Greenville will get to share their thoughts on a plan to bring a busy shopping area into the city limits. The Greenville City Council wants to annex the Cherrydale shopping area. Ahead of the public hearing, a councilman gave his thoughts on what he would do with the shopping center. Dressing up also means better investments, better quality of life, a place you want to live, a place you want to do business. But they know what they get when they come in the city, so I think you've got a lot of willing participants, businesses otherwise that, that do see an opportunity uh, and the advantages of being part of the city. The talks began after more than 30 property owners signed a petition asking to join the city. City leaders say it would mean a break in water and tax rates as well. 
Well, fresh off his Super Bowl performance, Usher has announced some new tour dates. A closer look at when you can go see him coming up next, Riley. Well, we did just get a flood report from Burke County down in Midville. We have a number of streets being impacted by flooding right now on Ivy Street, Trout Street, and also Murphy Street. I'm going to update on radar and that forecast just after the break. Visit the all this message. I'm Samantha. And I'm Savannah. And we're actual clients of Austin Jackson. A girl ran a red light. The tractor trailer was right beside us, so they hit her, causing her to hit us. We rolled four times down Washington Road. Dirt. Injuries were extensive, and we really needed not just prompt care, but a continued care plan. Once we met with Austin, I felt really sure that we were going to get taken care of. It was definitely nice knowing that we had someone we could trust, working on our case, taking care of things, and explaining every step of the way. Get Austin Jackson. The Augusta guy. You're watching News 12, first at 4. Continue. Well, the rain has been coming down in Augusta, leading to some flooding in downtown Augusta and beyond. We're going to send things over to First Alert Chief Meteorologist Riley Hill. Riley, you've been tracking it all day for us. The First Alert radar network has been covered in green all day. It really has. Well, we've seen a significant amount of rain pretty much every spot in the CSRE has seen close to two inches of rainfall over the last 24 hours, and many spots have seen over two inches. We actually just got a report of some flooding going on in Midville, down in southern Burke County, impacting some roadways down there. I wouldn't be surprised if we have other roadways that may be impacted across the CSRA. Still tracking some rain on our first alert radar network. The main cold front is still uh, back out in Alabama, so uh, still a good bit of uh, just some time before we're behind this front, and until we get behind that front, we're still going to keep that chance for rain. So if you're stepping out the next couple of hours, right now we're currently dry here in Augusta, but some rain is getting very close to us, I would imagine, showing up within the hour for us. And just currently speaking, light to moderate rainfall nothing too intense luckily the rain so far today has really helped limit our severe weather threat so that's not really the concern with what we're expecting this evening and tonight the concern is going to be just strong gradient winds so we are we are underneath a wind advisory through tomorrow morning for winds gusting 40 to 45 miles an hour now you combine those winds which is very saturated soils from all the rain we've seen today that could uh, unfortunately bring down a few trees maybe cause a few outages much more on this forecast in just a bit but let's get a quick update on your first alert Traffic. And now, first alert traffic. Here's a current look at I-20 and Riverwatch Parkway, and at the moment, at our studios, we are dry, but definitely some wet roads still out there, so be safe on the roadways, and much later tonight, once those winds pick up, make sure you're giving those high-profile vehicles uh, plenty of extra room. Here's a look at Lewis and Road and exit 190 right there in Columbia County. Same thing, currently dry, not seeing too much rain on our lens there, but uh, rain is starting to push towards this portion of Grovetown. Much more on this forecast for you in just a bit. Thanks, Riley. And you can stay up to date on any weather alerts with the First Alert weather app. You scan the flow code here on your screen, and it'll take you to the First Alert weather app. Well, four men from an organized crime ring are behind bars. Their app. Well, four men from an organized crime ring are behind bars after being caught with fraudulent checks, several passports, and a stolen handgun. It all started when the owner of a gas station became suspicious of the men. Cindy Hood joins us live in the newsroom. Bring us up to speed on what you've learned about what happened on Friday evening, Sydney. Well, one after another, this group walks into Williston Express with checks in hand trying to cash them. There was about 16 of them to be exact. But the problem here is the Columbia County Sheriff's Office says those checks they had in their hand were fake. Now, they're still adding up the numbers here, but they say a substantial amount was lost. And the way all of this works is this group travels from che Texas. They stop at various places. They do the same scam. And once they're done, they go back and then divvy up all the money that they got. And then in this case, the manager at Lewiston Express grew suspicious after about five or six people walked in with those checks. And then even more people followed in. So that's when he decided to take matters into his own hands. So the car is standing right here on a Livingston Road, right behind one of the another car standing. At that time, the guy had to say like, stop. When I move back like this, the car right behind him, he's trying to push his gas pedal. I heard like, he's coming, approaching me, like he's gonna hit me like right in, maybe in few seconds. 
And coming up all new tonight on News 12 at 6 o'clock, how the action of this man led to four arrests so far in this case, and then even more questions. Quick thinking there from that clerk there, an elaborate scheme as well. We look forward to hearing that update. Thanks again, Sydney. We have new details from a deadly crash in Columbia County that happened on December 8th. 82-year-old Eugene Hester died in the crash on I-20. A 32-year-old woman reported to be at fault for the crash has been released. They say Brittany Hodges tested positive for drugs in her system and has been charged with felony homicide. She was arrested last week. We now know the name of the alleged shooter at Joel Osteen's church in Houston. Police say 36-year-old Genesee Yvonne Moreno, a transgender woman, was shot and killed by two off-duty officers yesterday. Police say that Moreno walked in with an assault rifle that had the words Palestine written on it and then fired it. Her records show that she's had several arrests dating back to 2005 for carrying an unlawful weapon, evading arrest, and assault on a public official. The seven-year-old she had with her is still in critical condition. It happened between services at the mega church. Well, today, Fonnie Willis's lawyers are fighting to stop subpoenas of employees from Nathan Wade's firm. Willis hired Wade to work for her in the case against Donald Trump and his allies. Willis came out about her personal relationship with Wade on Friday. Those subpoenas are for a Thursday hearing that could mean the end of Willis and Wade on this landmark case. And it could mean a major turn for the November election. Besides disqualifying Ms. Willis's office, that could end the case entirely. It would absolutely extend the time frame. And in the analysis of Mr. Trump's defense and his co-defendants, adding additional time to this schedule is a win. It could also push the Georgia election interference trial beyond November. New tonight, the Burke County Sheriff's Office is offering a $1,000 reward for information leading to the arrest of a driver in a hit-and-run accident in Waynesboro. The Waynesboro Police Department releasing this updated picture of the suspected vehicle that left one adult and three children in the hospital. Officials say the crash happened on 6th Street near Liberty Street last Friday. Big music stars representing Georgia on stages around the world. Abby Kasoris reports, Georgia has a talent. Now lawmakers at the Capitol want to build up the industry around them. A quick discussion, a committee all in agreement, and a bill to create Georgia's statewide music commission moves forward. Members of that committee say after Super Bowl performance solidified their vote. Grammy-winning singer and songwriter Usher giving a shout-out to his hometown at the Super Bowl halftime show. Georgia music talent was on very, very vivid display. And I, I must say that myself and all of us here, I'm sure, are uh, very proud. Representative Tyler Paul Smith is sponsoring a bill to create a statewide music advisory council, a team made up of Georgia creators, studio owners, and industry leaders working towards supporting, cultivating, and promoting Georgia artists. Georgia's musical talent has to move north or west to really see a career thrive. The Recording Industry Association of America estimates Nashville brings in $9.7 billion in revenue for the city alone. The Georgia Council for Arts estimates the industry contributes $3.7 billion statewide. Tennessee has a music office. Georgia does not. Our music has provided the soundtrack for the world for a long time. Mala Sharma with Georgia Music Partners says Georgia's music industry is stagnant, causing talent to leave. I think we would see an immediate return on our investment. The bill states the commission will have to create a strategic and marketing plan to get people to move here to Georgia. That bill now goes for a vote in the House and then the Senate. In Atlanta, I'm Abby Casores. Thanks, Abby by Augusta Kiwanis Club and Georgia Chamber of Commerce. The students had the highest SAT score at each of their schools and selected a teacher who had a big impact on them. A great way to celebrate all of them today at St. Paul's. Riley? Absolutely. Congrats to all of them. We do have a first alert in effect tonight. Some pretty strong winds going to move in late tonight. That could unfortunately cause a few outages. Much more on this forecast just after the break. Time and temp. We're only comfortable when you are. 
When you've been hurt in a car wreck. All lines. Well, it's deeper than it looks. That's what people who drive through a neighborhood intersection discover on a rainy day. Neighbors say whenever there's a heavy downpour of rain, this intersection in DeKalb County is the first one to flood, but they're used to it. A tow truck driver talks about how many times he's been called out to this spot. Half people think that they could do it, but it's deeper than what it really looked like. And after that, the uh, car went over in the ditch. But it is what it is. And it turns out some cars are able to make it through and some aren't. You just never really know. But some locals have learned taking that chance is not worth the risk here. And Riley, every time we have a heavy downpour, we say do not drive through roads that are covered in water like that. That is just not a good idea because you never know what's underneath. Exactly right, Will. Turn around, don't drown. That's the phrase we always use out there. We actually have had a few of our roadways impacted by some flooding out there today. Today here in Augusta, we actually got close to two inches of rainfall, believe it or not. Got close to a daily record rainfall for us here in town. Uh, so this actually did create a surplus for not only the month of February, but also for the year. So we're back above average as far as rainfall goes. And here in Augusta, we definitely were not the top spots as far as rain reports go. You can see some much higher totals across. Jenkins, Grevin, Burke, even uh, portions of Emanuel County as well. So I'd imagine that's where there are some more flooding issues, unfortunately, that we're dealing with. This is a long 18-hour loop of all the rain we've seen since late last night. So you can see it was very continuous, heavy at times. So no surprise, we did pick up a couple inches of rain. And we're still not done with it just yet. We still have some rain getting close to us here in Augusta. This, uh, thankfully, is going to not turn severe for us. That was the concern uh, the past couple of days if these were going to be severe storms for us but luckily all the rain we saw earlier today just helped stabilize things so just rain but still expecting some pretty gusty winds late tonight even away from storms and showers so that is going to be the concern late tonight temperatures holding steady in the 60s but rain chances do look pretty good for us and then we're going to see uh, those winds really peak once we get closer to midnight and then the overnight hours we're going to continue to see those winds gusting over 30 maybe could get close, close to 40 miles an hour in a few spots so that is why we have put out the first First alert, just being overly cautious because we do have very saturated soils across the area. So just so those stronger wind gusts could unfortunately knock out a few trees, maybe create some power outage concerns. But throughout the day Tuesday, we're going to see big improvement. Lots of sun in store for tomorrow. And temperatures don't look bad either. We're going to wake up in the 40s tomorrow morning, and then the afternoon highs should be close to 60. The wind advisory will stay in effect until 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, but you can see the wind does look a little bit less by the afternoon. So we should see improvement improvement the later we get to tomorrow and then Wednesday is Valentine's Day don't forget about your Valentine's out there should see a beautiful Wednesday forecast we're going to wake up pretty chilly in the 30s early in the day afternoon highs will be just a tad warmer into the mid 60s and if you're heading out for your Valentine's Day evening weather does look to stay nice it's just going to be uh, seasonally cool out there here's our hour by hour planner for this evening and two tonight so still dealing with some showers the next few hours or so those will be pushing out once we get past midnight and then the concern is just going to be that wind through early tomorrow morning temperatures falling to the 40s by daybreak tomorrow and then afternoon highs should be able to get close to 60 so a comfortable end to the day and then wednesday morning is going to feel a little bit colder for us i would imagine we get close to freezing in a few spots and then afternoon highs sunny conditions and temps hitting the mid 60s and for uh, thursday morning most likely going to be a cool start but not really seeing any significant uh, cold weather really heading our way anytime soon. Here's our five-day planner as far as rain chances go pushing forward this week. So the spotty little green specks you see on this for Tuesday, that's just what's left for us late tonight. Not really going to be found during the day Tuesday. And we're going to stay dry at least through Friday. It's going to be Friday night to unfortunately our Saturday. Once again, our weekend rain chances will be with us. So in the seven-day forecast, you are going to see that low wind chance for maybe a few showers Saturday. Doesn't look to necessarily be anything too significant, but temperature will feel cooler by Sunday. Thanks, Riley. The Smith Hazel Rec Center and Park are about to get a facelift. Renovations inside the rec center are already underway. They're tearing down the restrooms to make way for ADA compliant facilities. On the outside, decades old trees are standing in the way. Alyssa Lyons looks closer at why the community is asking for change. I just want to be able to, when I walk Smith Hazel track, that I'm walking on level ground, that I'm not tripping over stumps, that I'm not having to give out a breath and needing an asthma pump to get up a hill. A simple want that hasn't been a simple battle. The Smith Hazel Rec Center hasn't seen much change since the Johnson administration. 
This is a safety concern. This is for the handicapped to be able to come out. This is just for people to be able to enjoy. This is for our children. While the world has changed in 60 years, life has begun to show through the cracks where it really shouldn't. Forget playing tennis because it forgot you. The outdoor basketball court has a chance of breaking more ankles than the players. And like the old nursery rhyme, the track could do more damage to your grandma's back. You being an elderly person, you can't get up that hill. Let's let them level it so I can still sit on a bench but see my child, my grandchild over there playing. That will be a problem of the past, but so will the trees standing in the way. To make it happen, 68 trees will need to be removed. We understand trees are important. I love shade just like everyone else. 21 will be replanted. It sparked debate in Aiken. It's not necessary. We don't have to fight. This is not something we have to fight about. She claims it's time in Aiken, Alyssa Lyons on your side. And some in Aiken say removing the trees removes the natural beauty of the park. The park upgrades are expected to wrap up this fall. Stick with us. We have more news and weather coming up after a short break. First Alert Radar, powered by Jim Hudson Automotive Group. Halftime in a dramatic finish in overtime. Super Bowl 58 had it all. Our sports director, Dan Booth, is here to tell us why fans around here... Between two good football teams, Usher at halftime and a dramatic finish in overtime. Super Bowl 58 had it all. Our sports director, Dan Booth, is here to tell us why fans around here had something to cheer for. With millions upon millions of people watching, a Laney Wildcat and a Georgia Bulldog had their fingerprints all over the Kansas City Chiefs winning their third Super Bowl in the last five years. San Francisco was in control for most of the first three quarters, but late in the third, this punt bounced off of a 49ers foot, setting the stage for Augusta native and Laney High School alum Jalen Watson to spring into action, pounce on that loose ball, recovering what would be a season save fumble recovery for Kansas City, completely swinging the momentum of this game in the Chiefs' favor. They scored a touchdown shortly after to take the lead, and when people talk about this Super Bowl 10 years from now, there is no doubt that Jalen Watson's name will be mentioned. University of Georgia alum, McCole Hardman, had three catches for 57 yards, including his Super Bowl winning touchdown catch in overtime. It's been an interesting year for Hardman because he spent the the beginning of the season with the New York Jets before being traded back to Kansas City where he had played his first four years of his career. This is Hardman's third Super Bowl victory and he has definitely helped Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey aka Taylor Swift's boyfriend, Andy Reid and the rest of Chiefs Kingdom continue their reign over the rest of the NFL. All right, thanks for that, Dan. It was a heck of a game last night. Uh, fortunately, not the best weather to start off the work week after the Super Bowl. We do have a flood warning in effect for Stevens Creek near Modoc, at least through Wednesday. I'm going to look at the forecast for you just after the break. And keep your party hat on. Tomorrow is Mardi Gras. We'll tell you what this holiday celebrates coming up after a short break. Let's cry, let's cry baby. Hilton Ribbon Crybaby.com. <laughs> We'll go ahead and get ready to park. The party tomorrow is Fat Tuesday, a day of fun before the restrictions of Lent. Massive parades, street parties, mass balls, and other events are held in New Orleans and Mobile, Alabama, in places like Venice, Rio de Janeiro, and others. It's called, I think it's Carnival. Fat Tuesday is always 47 days before Easter and a day before Ash Wednesday. Riley, did I get the pronunciation right or no? Sounded right to me. I tried my best. With confidence. Meredith's giving me a thumbs up. I think I nailed it. But it looks like a lot of fun down there in the streets, Riley. Oh, yeah, they're going to be having some fun down there in the French Quarter, Bourbon Street. Should be a great time, and uh, looks like the weather should be okay for Mardi Gras this year. Uh, just going to be a little bit cool out there in New Orleans. Uh, same thing for us. We are expecting clear skies once we get into later tonight and tomorrow, but still cloudy conditions over Clarksdale Lake. The wind is going to be a factor late tonight. That is going to be picking up, and we really haven't seen much of a breeze out there today, so that is going to be changing once the main front does get a little bit closer tonight. Here's a look at our radar network where there is some rain currently up towards the lake just north of Augusta and some rain south of town along Highway 25 from Burke County all the way into Millen. So there is still some rain out there. If you're stepping out, uh, any rain we continue to see could just create some of those minor flooding issues. You can 
can see we've gotten over five inches of rainfall for a good swath of Burke, Jenkins, and Scrabbing County over the last 24 hours. We're back to dry weather, though, late tonight. This is looking midnight, so clear skies, but this is when the wind's really going to be picking up, and we could see those winds gusting 40 to 45 miles an hour. That will stay gusty at least through early Tuesday morning, but throughout the day Tuesday, we should see uh, generally sunny skies, comfortable temps in the afternoon, most likely getting close to 60 out there. And Valentine's Day on Wednesday looks nice, sunny skies. Temps are going to be cool in the morning in the 30s, but some really nice afternoons in the 60s this week. All right, thanks, Riley. Stick with us. We have more news, weather, and sports coming up after a short break on News 12 at 6 o'clock.